Hello and welcome to Dave's Old Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to build a paper towel holder, or at least how I build a paper towel holder. Now if you're asking yourself, why would I build a paper towel holder when I can just go to Walmart and buy one for 12 bucks? <laughs> you can buy them at Walmart for $8, I went ahead and looked it up, so first of all, you're way off there. Secondly, um, because I can. Now, this particular project was made out of lumber that was sitting on the shelf over here. And in fact, if my memory serves me correctly, it was actually some old oak flooring that I'm pretty sure my dad called the police on this guy uh, in order to keep it from being burnt. And he ended up with it. Since then, all but just a few pieces have been used up, and now I'm pretty sure most all of it's been used, the last of it being on this paper towel holder project. Let's get into the dimensions of this piece. The thickness was originally three quarters of an inch, and it's been since planed down to five eighths. The width is four and a half inches, the depth to the point of the radius is eight and a half inches, and the overall width is 13 and a half inches. And I have found that that is actually quite large for a paper towel holder and does not need to be anywhere near that size. Now, why did I want to build this particular project? Well, both my father and grandfather have built one for their own homes, and uh, the one that I had hanging on the wall broke, so I figured, well, it's my time to shine now. So I went ahead and gave it a shot. Now, the first thing that I went ahead and did was rip all the boards to width which, as I said before, was four and a half inches. Now, I'm going to let you in on my little secret here. I actually ripped them a little bit wider than four and a half because I wasn't exactly sure how I was going to line up the joints uh, when I went to put all three pieces together. So that left me a little bit that I could end up trimming off at the end. One piece was long enough to get my two side pieces out of, and I only had to cut one other piece. I had plain it to thickness in order to get all of the material necessary to build this paper towel holder. Once I had every piece to the correct width, I went ahead and cut them to length. Once I had all the pieces cut to the sizes that I needed, it was then time to figure out how I was gonna join them together. Now there's a couple different methods that you could use. You could use some sort of a routed glue joint. You could use pocket screws, which would be the simplest and easiest method. Or you could dovetail the sides together, which is totally unnecessary and absolutely what I did. Now, it's very important to point out that I've never dovetailed anything in my life. There's two jigs sitting here that Dave had, but I've never once seen him use them, and I've never used them myself. In fact, I have two three-ring binders that are two inches wide, full of manuals and instruction booklets and all sorts of things that he saved. Um, we don't seem to have one for the dovetailing jig. That was disappointing. However, I was able to look it up online and find the information that I needed to give it a try. And I still did it wrong the first time, but that's how it goes. I went ahead and grabbed a couple scrap pieces of pine and the width really didn't matter on this in order to run the sample. It was primarily the thickness that was required in order to get myself in the ballpark of where I needed to be. And so I set it up in the jig and grabbed the router, all the necessary bits, and went ahead and ran the sample piece. Look, I'm not gonna lie to anybody. Anything that you could ever want to build, pretty much anything, already exists here in Dave's old workshop. But the problem is, I don't know where any of it's at. I know that we have the necessary tools to build these things, but I don't really know where I'd even find them half the time. And I just kind of stumble across something that I don't know what it is and go, that might be useful later. Other times you spend half your shop time looking for those tools. This was one of those times. I had no idea where the appropriate collar, dovetailing bit, and even the correct router were located. I knew that we had them, wasn't sure where they were. So one thing you're gonna note is that this router is plenty large for this particular application, and I would have liked to have used the smaller router had I been able to find it. Now you'll notice a couple things as I run this sample piece. One, I'm holding the router backwards. That was actually intentional because I wasn't able to see through the frosted glass window that is actually attached to this base, and I needed to be able to see where I was going and what I was doing before I, you know, cut open the jig or something like that. The other thing is that the vertical board is actually supposed to sit up flush to the horizontal board. And I have it out in front of the horizontal board, which is 100% why I had to go cut off the end of this and try my sample again. My second attempt was pretty successful. 
with the minor issue of the fact that the vertical board did end up splitting out at the end, but that's no big deal. It's just a sample piece. Once I confirmed that my measurements were correct and that I had things set up in a way that would allow the two pieces to fit together, I decided to go ahead and try it on the real thing. Once I knew that I had the setup correct, I went ahead and used my actual pieces of oak in the jig. I made sure to pay special attention to which piece overlapped what. And I was also to get the router facing the correct direction this time. Now one thing that I noted is that oak cuts a lot harder than pine does, which makes sense because oak is a harder material than pine is. I went ahead and scored the face of the piece so that I would minimize the tear out that I was going to get in the pins, and then I went ahead and made a rough pass and went back and made a finish pass. You're plowing out a lot of material when you first go into a piece like this, so making a finish pass is a good idea. It kind of takes the stress off the cutting tool as well as the material you're cutting. It'll give you much more accurate results. Now this would be a very tight fit as is the goal with most of your joinery. And so I had to get it just barely started and tap it together to make sure that it fit the way that I wanted it to. Now I should point out that this is a half blind dovetail jig setup. This is the kind that you would use for say a drawer or something like that, something that's gonna get a lot of stress. And it is again, highly unnecessary for a paper towel holder. But it does create a nice beautiful joint. And because we're joining these three pieces together, I'm going to have to cut the pins in the side pieces and the tails in the back rail. Back rail will get cut twice and each side piece will get cut once. Once I knew everything was going to fit the way that I wanted it to, I went ahead and cut the other two pieces as necessary. Once I had the pins and tails in all three pieces, I went ahead and dry fit them all together to make sure it fit like I wanted it to, and I had the measurements that I was looking for. Worked out pretty well. And I began to lay out the radius on the side pieces using an old piece of sandpaper because what else would you use to lay out a radius? I then took my pieces to the bandsaw and cut them just proud of the line, making sure that I had something to sand smooth later.
Once I got the corners knocked off, I came over here to Dave's old sander and went ahead and smoothed them up, matching the radius to the line. Once I had my radius in place, I went ahead and laid out for the center point at which the dowel is going to rest and pivot on this holder. I measured off the center of the radius and off the center of the side piece and used a scratch hole to make my center point. Once I had my center points laid out, I went ahead and got a Forstner bit that was just a little bit larger than the dowel itself so that there'd be plenty of room for it to slide into position, rotate, pivot, and all of that. I went over to Dave's old drill press and drilled them to the depth that I was looking for. I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of material for the dowel to rest on without, you know, going overboard, because we wouldn't do that on this project. I made sure to take special care when I was filming this to put my hand directly in the way so that you couldn't see anything that I was doing. That was sarcasm, you're going to hear that a lot. Now once I had those counterbores made, I brought the pieces back to the workbench and I began to lay out for the angle that was going to be necessary in order to slip the paper towel rod in and out. Now there's one thing that I want to note here. There's a reason that I want this to slide in at an angle and not just drop in vertically over the Forstner bit holes that we made. The reason is I want this paper towel holder to be able to be mounted to the wall or under a cabinet. I don't want to have to worry about the dowel falling out or the paper towel roll falling out of the holder itself. So I want to make sure that there's a little bit of an angle so that you can universally mount this piece. Now I didn't show it in the video, but the way that I figured out what angle I needed was I slipped the dowel rod into the paper towel roll itself and set it up on the assembled holder, sliding it forward enough that I knew that the paper towel roll itself would clear if it were to drop straight down into the piece from there, making sure that it cleared the back. Once I had figured out where that was, I just took a pencil and marked it on the side of the rail and then took my bevel gauge, which you're seeing here, and just drew a line from the back of the Forster bit hole to that mark that I made before. And if you're wondering, in this case, it ended up being 113 and a half degrees. Now, as I said, this particular project is larger than it really needs to be. So if you were to shorten it up some, you would still have plenty of space to get that paper towel roll into the actual holder. You may actually even have to use less of an angle than I used, which there was plenty of it, so there was no problem there. Now, once I did the layout, I took the pieces over to the bench with the router and I went ahead and just freehanded out the slot that I needed. Um, this really turned out to not be the greatest of ideas, uh, mainly because I don't have a lot of experience freehanding with a router. But I did come up with an idea that I think would have helped me out had I chosen to do it this way, and that is to just take a dovetailing saw and slightly score that line. In fact, you could even saw right to the depth that you needed right on the lines and then just use your router with a straight cutting bit to clean out in between your saw marks. That should give you a nice even width and you wouldn't have to do what I did and clean it up with a chisel and some sandpaper and a straight edge. It still worked out okay, but I think it could have been a more efficient process. Once I had both slots routed out, I went ahead and dry fit everything back together again. And this was so that I could measure and make sure what the length of my dowel rod needed to be. So once I assembled, I had to make sure that it was square and then measure from the depth of each slot and then measure the dowel rod, leaving a little bit of wiggle room, cut it to length. Now on other paper towel holders that I've seen built, they were very tight to the roll itself. So I wanted to make sure that there was plenty of space for the roll to slide in and plenty of space for the, the dowel itself to slide into the slot. So I'm leaving everything just a little bit short or a little extra wide, depending on which dimension I'm working with. Once I had the dowel rod cut to length, I went ahead and disassembled the piece in a very controlled manner. And then I went ahead and sanded everything until I absolutely hated my life, which didn't take long when it comes to sanding.
Once we were down to 220 grit, I went ahead and glued the pins together and reassembled everything and clamped it together, making sure that it stayed square. Once the glue was dry, I went ahead and popped the clamps off and uh, did a little more sanding. Now you'll notice that I'm taking my pencil here and just squiggling lines over the piece that I'm sanding at the moment. And that is so that I know when I'm done with each grit. Once the pencil lines are all gone, I know that I've evenly taken a layer off that particular piece and I can move on to the next grit. This ensures that you sand evenly and don't distort your piece. Check that out, I found the other router. And with this one, I was able to add the edge profile to the piece that I was looking for. I wasn't looking for anything fancy, just something to add a little bit of character to it. And once again, I made a rough and a finishing pass. That completes all the woodworking, now on to the finish, my favorite part. Well, actually, sanding is my favorite part. This is my second favorite part. More sarcasm. For the finish on this piece, I just used a natural Danish oil. Oak already has quite a bit of beauty in it already. No need to add any particular stain. I just wanted to give it something that would help it be protected. I just followed the directions on the can, flooded the material on, let it dry for about 15 minutes, added a second coat, allowed that to dry for an additional 15 minutes and wiped off the excess. It then has to fully dry for about 24 hours. Now that's only technically one treatment of Danish oil, and I think that you could probably use some more on this piece, but I wanted to see how it looked and I didn't want to make it too dark from the get-go. I can always add more later. So that's how I built the paper towel holder. A fairly simple project that was a little more complicated than needed to be, but that's pretty much how I do everything. I appreciate everyone watching. I hope you'll like the video, comment on it, and subscribe to the channel because um, I'd like to make more videos like this and your feedback really helps. Hopefully if you didn't care about the woodworking portion of the video, you at least enjoyed the sarcasm.